And welcome back, everyone, to episode 108 of the Marvel Yeet podcast. I am your host this week, Luke, <laughs> and with me, I have Will. What's poppin', people? X-Men Dark Phoenix, which is due out next November. I just learned that. Um, I thought it was actually coming <laughs> yeah, out in the summertime. About ten but, minutes ago. <laughs> uh, d- does that film 2nd. have anything to compete with next November? Uh, in, in any, like, big, massive tent pools? At all? Spider-Man and Aquaman are the month after, so not really. And the month before is Venom, so not exactly. Are you serious, dude? So next winter is just going to be completely saturated. Oh, dude, October through December is all... There's at least one a month. Like, I think we have... I think Nick and I ran through... I said, I think minimum we have 18 different movies that we would be covering on the channel. Oh, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> 2018 back to is going to be a, a pretty Phoenix. big year for us. So we got some like uh, official first images from X-Men Dark Phoenix, and they look interesting. Um, you know, in one of the photos, we can kind of see Jean Grey is uh, sort of sitting down, um, and it seems to be raining. Uh, there's another photo where we actually see some spaceships, so yeah, I guess it's confirmed they are going into space. Um Another photo, we got our first look at Jessica Chastain as the main antagonist, and who knows, is she playing Lalandra of the Shi'ar, or is she a Skrull, yeah. or like I said a few minutes ago, could she be playing a character from the Badoon, which <laughs> that is like really far out of left field, and I would be, prefer that. I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be excited if you called it, but I'd also be a little mad, I'd be like, alright, I didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess. That's how I would feel. Sure. <laughs> Why not? I just... I, I, I don't know. They're in, in, Like, you know what the scary thing is? Is, like, I think that they were going to reveal what she was going to be playing until San Diego Comic-Con when Marvel announced that they were going to be doing the Scrolls and Captain Marvel. But it shouldn't matter because their movie comes out first. Oh, it does like, matter. Like, it Fox, matter. why'd you be... I mean, Fox was a bunch of bitches anyways because... Um, at San Diego, they were had already like started filming. You could have dropped concept art before they did. Well, this possibly, yeah. Well, possibly Thursday, these characters aren't even going to belong to them anymore. So, well, I mean, the, that the finalization of that wouldn't be till like 2019. So whatever, but still, yeah, still, you right? I know I'm right. Shut up. I know it. Anyways, I know- <laughs> <laughs> baby, uh, I know it. <laughs> So the next photo, we see uh, Professor X and Nightcrawler, and I'm not sure who these other two characters are. Um, Attractive white. It is raining, and it looks like they're po- probably at a funeral. All of them are in black, and it's it's sunny yet raining. Um, I think someone asked if there was ever that funeral for um, Cyclops' brother. Maybe that's what that is. Took I highly with- doubt it. Well, yeah, because it's set in 1992. That'd be a fucking... That'd be a dick move that you waited eight years to bury somebody. My guess is that they're killing off a major character. Um, oh, are they, but, are they just going to not do anything with Storm again and then kill her? For quote-unquote quote, I don't know. emotional effect? I, I think that's Storm in the picture, actually. But... Oh. Yeah. I don't, can't really... I can't really tell... Oh, with her, damn it. I think that might actually be Professor X, Nightcrawler... Looks like Beast. Um... Yeah, it kind of looks like Nicholas Holt from the back, and then I think the actress is playing Storm. I can't really tell, though. Uh, and But anyways, our next photo, we get a look at Mystique, and guess what? She's wearing clothes this time. Oh, gasp. Um, <laughs> She's not in lib nude. <laughs> and then um, in the next photo, Michael Fassbender is talking to the new director, Simon Kinberg, the guy who wrote Fant 4 Stick, is now directing this film. Um, yeah, these photos, honestly, they're... They're pretty mediocre. Yeah, I mean, they like don't the, really do too much. The most interesting photo I can say is probably the probably the space one, but the spaceship, at least the one that's close up, it looks to have a NASA logo on it. So, I, I <laughs> Mutant don't, X NASA. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Um, that's probably the most intriguing photo we have from that. But they're gonna make the X Men the Fantastic Four now. <laughs> the, <laughs> Yeah, wasn't there, like, a rumor out or something like that? They they were supposed um, to... I think Screen Rant said, well, uh, will X-Men Dark Phoenix reboot the Fantastic Four? And it's like, God, no, please stop. Oh. Oh. Oh, Screen Rant. Oh, Screen Rant. Oh, 
you just you big bag of bad ideas <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to kind of wait and see, um, you know, over the next yeah. several months. We'll probably be getting a trailer sometime. Uh, Honestly, you know. I'm concerned because, in all fairness, like, let's be real, Jean Grey was one of the weaker aspects. Like, here, okay, so she looks like Jean with the red hair and the fire and all that. Cool. You got the easy part done. The thing that bothered a lot of people was the floating accent syndrome, which happens sometimes with English actors. Which, you know, acting's not easy. Doing a completely different nationality isn't easy either. I get it. It's just, like, that's kind of my concern when you're doing a movie focused around this one character. Right, right. And she may or may... I don't know. We'll see. Because we didn't see much of her in the last movie, especially since they cut out the mall sequence. But, you know, I, I hope... I don't want them Which, to fail. I don't want it to suck, but it's just, they let's cut be out, honest. That, I, I was going to say about Days of Future Past, they cut out, or, no, I'm sorry, X-Men Apocalypse. Apocalypse. They cut out the best scene in the whole film. Yeah. The one that, um, that's where all the, uh, during production, that's where all the photos came from, was that mall scene, and then we <laughs> never saw it. It was pushed to a deleted scene. I'm like, fuck you! <laughs> yep. Exactly my, is it, like, that's my point, dude. Like, they don't really, like, you know, take into consideration, you know, like, what works and what doesn't. Uh, a lot of these X-Men films, they're just kind of still stuck in the early 2000s. Or even some I mean, aspects, I feel like some of the writing style is from the 90s. And We're, we're just, almost uh, back in the early 2000s. This one's set in uh, 90, 92, I think, 92 or 94. So Exactly. I think, I think Tim called that a while ago. <laughs> but just because a film is set in a particular time period doesn't mean you have to write the film itself like it's set in that time period but you, you know, know what i mean you notice they uh they changed a lot between 94 and 99 oh yeah because right. remember the original x-men uh didn't it film in 99 and come out in 2000 yup uh, a couple has <laughs> been less than a decade uh i think they started the principal happened? photography in early ni- uh early 1999 yeah and i think they i think they actually pushed the release date because it was supposed to release in 99, but they pushed it to 2000, because 2000. I know. Big, big deal. It's but, a, it, damn, people, y'all it's so aged weird a to lot. Think, man. They look like completely different people, almost. <laughs> you look like the guy from Star Trek. It doesn't really matter, because those movies were written out of continuity. So. Except for Wolverine. Like, this is literally <laughs> the newest continuity right now, but I'm hoping that this ends after tomorrow. So <laughs> <laughs> by, t- by the time you hear this, hopefully it will be done. Exactly. As the Duh. great mouse wills it so. <laughs> the almighty mouse wills it. The, the God King Mickey strikes again. Oh, you mean God King Bob Iger? Uh, yeah, God King Bob <laughs> Iger. Under control. The true face of the mouse. Execute uh, order. Own Fox 21st. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I said, we're just going to kind of have to wait until to see more because these photos really don't, you know, they tell, tell us a lot. We, they I, don't I, really I, tell us anything. I guess that's supposed to get us hype, but it isn't. It just it's like, oh, I mean, these even exist. Even Jennifer Lawrence isn't looking forward to this film, so. Okay, d- wait, before we go to the next topic, did you hear the story about how she got roped back into doing this? Yes, I did. Yes, and I'm like, I did. I'm like, you could have just said no. There was no, you said that as a joke because she was like, um. All right, I'll only do the next X Men movie if you're directing it. Simon Kimberg comes back like a couple months later, like, guess what? I'm directing the movie. She's like, oh, I'm fucked. And I'm like, you could have said no. You could have just said, oh, I was kidding. Because clearly you're not invested in these movies. You haven't been for almost two films. Like, no, we don't want you back. <laughs> so, I mean, if, sorry so if you if do like movie... her in the movies, but a lot of people didn't, and I was one of them. I really did not like her in Apocalypse. No, nobody did because her face just screamed she was there for a paycheck. Like, there was no heart or emotion put into that role at all. Like, um, say what you, you, you will that, about the rest of the movie, they at least tried. It, it feels like Jennifer Lawrence is the type of actress where, like, if she's in more than one film, or, or you know, like, if she has to do a sequel or a threequel or anything like that, like, each film just, like, her... Her emotion just keeps fading away each movie, and um, you you can see that in almost every single franchise that she starred in. And uh, so, like you know, it's not exclusive to working with Fox or you know these X Men properties. But 
I'm just going to say this right now. If the film is horrible, which I'm kind of, I'm guessing that it's going to be, um, I'm blaming it on Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Everything like that went wrong with this movie, it's, it's all her fault. <laughs> Everything. Because if she would, if she would have just like not said anything, Simon Kinberg wouldn't have directed this movie most likely. Uh, because I don't like, I really don't like Kinberg. Like, not him no, personally, just... because like I don't know him personally. I just don't like his writing. Yeah. I don't like, like the way that he produces or uh, directs films. So I'm just, I'm just like thinking about how Jennifer Lawrence was unintentionally the catalyst for Dark Phoenix. Oh God. <laughs>